consistently be successful at fly fishing means you must adapt to the situations presented and be ready to change as each situation changes. This means knowing and understanding a fish's diet and how to present the right fly in a natural way. A main source of a fish's diet are nymphs. These are available to be fed on all year and fish get quite used to them. Fishing nymphs can be the most successful way to catch not only the most fish, but also the biggest. Nymphing on the crow's nest, that's today as Streamlines proudly presents Sport Fishing on the Fly. <laughs> Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Scott, makers of high performance fly rods. Welcome everybody to Sport Fishing on the Fly. I'm Grant Fines and co-host Don Fresky here. We're at the Crow's Nest River, which to me I think is my favorite river anywhere. Oh, Because you get great dry fly action almost all the time except for a day like today, because it's too windy and it's just a little bit cold. Yeah. But there's a lot of things you can do when there's no dry fly. You can, there's all the different nymphing techniques that we want to show you today. Yeah. Some, uh, some traditional stuff with the strike indicator, nice long leader, and a nymph. We're also going to show you some grasshopper, what we call hopper dropper fishing, which has a grasshopper and a nymph on there, and maybe some other untraditional styles too. Yeah, we'll see what the day brings. Yeah. And, uh, because, I mean, the big fish traditionally sit down lower. They don't often come up and take things off the surface. 90% of a fish's diet is, is nymphs. Right. So that goes to show you, you can get some big fish down there. A good way to catch a big fish yeah. and a good way, like I say, in a day like today when there is no dry fly happening, well, yeah. we might get some hoppers because it's starting to warm up a yeah. little bit. We'll keep our fingers <laughs> crossed for that. Maybe. We'll wait and see. Good way to do it. It is, for sure. So what are we going to start with? I think we'll start the traditional way with the strike indicator and the uh, nymph on the bottom. Okay. Give everybody a little lesson on that and then we'll proceed from there. Well, yeah. let's go do it. Yeah, for sure. Well, we come to the first hole to do some traditional nymph fishing and it looks like a nice little hole. I'm gonna start with the San Juan worm, which for the Crow's Nest River always seems to work really yeah, well. Yeah, that's your favorite. Yeah. I've got a little beadhead mayfly, because it is early October, and the mayflies and small blue wing olives do come off this time of year. Ah, so it'd be a good choice. You got it weighted though, too, the beadhead. I do, I think any nymph should be a little weighted, just to get it down to the bottom. You do want that nymph on the bottom. What happens if you don't have a weighted nymph? Well, it sits up and floats up, a nymph comes off the bottom off the rocks, and the fish naturally see it right on the bottom. Right. So if it's not down there. So you can use a split shot to get something down if you need Even to. Even a little micro shot about a foot up on from the fly will work really well too. Okay, I've got about seven feet of leader on right now with a strike indicator that I can move, but how do you tell the depth and how far you want this thing down? Yeah, really that's a good question because you get into the deeper pockets, but the deeper pockets usually the water's too slow to nymph. You want to stay up in the ripple runs where it's two to five feet, which is ideal. So is there a, a magic number that you go with? If it's five feet deep, you go five feet a liter? I would say, always, I always go about two feet more. Okay. So if I'm fishing five feet of water, I'd go to seven foot liter. All right, well, let's, make sure I'm down. let's get in here and give it a try. It's also important to get what we call a drag-free drift on this here. Yeah. That's not always easy when you got currents going in and no, out, but it's, not. it's most important. It is, so we'll right. give it a go and see how it goes. Yeah. Oh, there's a nice fish. That's well, you nice know, fishing one, eh? with nymphs is really similar to any other type of fishing. You have to hunt the fish out. You got to find where they're lying. And the place we did the intro at is not where the fish were at. We actually had to move down a little bit to find where the fish were. That's on the San Juan worm. And you know, it, whatever time of year you come here, the San Juan worm is just deadly. Oh, look at how healthy this fish is. Come here. That's a nice healthy bull. Oh, it's cold water. Look at that. Nice healthy. 
Healthy, healthy. Get rid of the San Juan worm. Look how fat that is. Pretty color fish. I mean, that's what you come to the Crow's Nest River for. A fish just like that. And we're revived up here. There he goes. Back to his feeding. Ah, what a great technique. You know, it's just too windy and too cold for any dry fly action to be coming on. But what a great way to catch fish using the nymph. So we've come to this first little area here. Oh, <laughs> oh that was a nice fish. Too bad. Yeah. Jeez, good try. <laughs> what you're doing is you're casting up and across yep. at about a 45 upstream, mending your line up. And what we mean in mending is you cast out and drop your rod tip upstream, it'll mend that line perpendicular to the current. And that gives that fly a nice drive free float. And really, you just wait for that bobber to go under. And you got a fish. You set the hook. Yeah, and you've got the uh, the gooey bobber, the float that we call. What do you call it? Strike indicator. Yeah, strike indicator. And we call it the gooey bob. And about seven to nine feet of uh, of leader, and the nymph on the end. And the reason you're trying to you cast it upstream is so when you set the hook, you're actually going to catch the fish. Exactly. Because if you just the real nice thing is to get well. Really, reason you're casting 45 is to allow the fly to get down into the area you're fishing. So you should always creep up a little bit to before the pocket you're fishing. So if the pocket's here, you know, even with you, you're fishing, you can cast 45 up to get it to slide down into the pocket. And you don't want to do the really long casts here either because you're going to have trouble mending your line and controlling it. Exactly. Because you have to pick up all the slack as a fish takes. You have to be ready to set. If you've got a bunch of slack line, it gives the fish a chance to spit You've the hook You've got up. that much more time to react, yeah. So, looks like you're doing all right. Now yeah, it's a kind of fish. fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll slide up into the good hole in a minute. All right. All right. That looks like a nice one. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. Decent. You got him just up in the head end, eh? In the head end of the pool there, yeah. Well, I was working this area in here, and it got a little deeper. It actually gets down to about three feet. So I think I'm a little light on the... <laughs> oh, that's a nice one. <laughs> Boy, as soon as he saw me, he, he took off. So our rig? Well, I still got on the... Uh, still got on the, uh, the normal, the standard. San Juan worm. San Juan worm with the, uh, with the gooey bob, a little strike indicator. Strike indicator, indicator yeah. Okay. And uh, I just had a feeling at the, the right spot of the pool, if I could get the right cast in, and the wind finally subsided. It just blew oh. for about five oh. minutes, couldn't do no, nothing. I was just getting uh, punished down here. So I waited it out. Oh, he's a nice fish. You know, this whole run is beautiful. It really, really shallows out down the end, but right at the head, it goes about four or five feet up there and just tapers down really nice. And the funny thing is, you know, the fish are in here. You can almost see them. You can't see them, but they're, it's, it's got that perfect bottom where you can almost see them. Well, you know, when I, when I went up there, right offshore, about, oh, two feet offshore, sitting in about a foot of water, there was a... It was one about 18 inches. Well, they'll scare you because they'll dart out. They'll <laughs> yeah. be sitting right along the bank. And that's another thing. You really have to be careful. You really should approach these fish from the from the bottom of the pool up. Never walk by the whole pool you're going to fish and start from the head and always always take it from the from the bottom up. Yeah, that's a good point because when I, I actually walked up here, but when I did, I went way up you the bank. You were way up. I believe I could hear you bristling way up the top there. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Come here. Yeah, you're ready now. Oh, that's a nice one. Nice and fat, <laughs> isn't he? Yeah, was he ever, yeah? Gorgeous Beauty. fish, eh? Oh, pretty cool. Look colors. at that. Oh, isn't that sweet? Nice. That's what makes the crow's nest so special. That guy right there. Wow, oh, then he's gone. And off he goes. And another method you were saying was the tuck cast, to get that fly out and down quicker? Yeah, in order to get your nymph through the surface film or the surface layer of the water, you do what's called a tuck cast. Okay. And it's, it's pretty simple. All right. All you do is when you cast out a normal cast, when you finish your cast, you're actually pointing with the rod level to the water. And all you're going to do when the line's almost all the way out, you're just going to lift back up. So it just jerks it a little bit, forces that nymph to dive down. It so kind of snaps looks, the fly down and out, eh? Yeah, it kind of looks like this. You just out, oh, and right at the end, you just pull it back oh, and I see how see. that nymph just dives and right also, down. It, it allows your line to stay nice and straight, too. It's another it another great way of mending, too, yeah. I mean, the other way is doing the reach mend. You fire out and you reach up, but then you have to gather all that line in. Gather all so line. the tuck cast is a neat one. It takes 
not very much practice at all. No. It's pretty good. No. And you'll know if, you're, if your nymph is hitting the water before your strike indicator, you got it right. Geez, right on. Well, the next kind of fishing, it's getting warm out now. Hoppers. Hopper <laughs> dropper, that's one of our favorites, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Hopper dropper. Warm enough. Now we're going to head into about two feet of water, foot to two feet. Yep. Fish move into the shallows to feed. Hopper dropper should be ideal. Yeah, it's a great way to fish because you got a chance of picking some up dry too. Yeah, that's right, and we have before. Yep. Mostly on the nymph, but uh, we'll give it a go. See okay. how it goes. All we'll right. be back with some hopper dropper. Yeah. Yeah, it's deep there. Oh, what a pool. I'm going to run this through before I walk up it, I think. Yeah. For the rapid start. Well, now it's time to get on to a little hopper dropper. Yeah, yeah, totally different kind of uh, nymph fishing. A lot of guys use it though. We first learned it with, uh, with Vic Bergman. Yeah, Vic Bergman showed us. Yeah. showed us. And it's a great little way to fish both patterns, especially when it's windy. You know, you can get it out there, you can fish dry because you have the hopper on dry, and you got the nymph down, so you're fishing wet too. So it's two, two in one. So what you got is the hopper. You tie that onto the end of your normal leader. We yeah. shorten our leaders up for this too. You oh, don't yeah. need to run a long leader. Not at all. I'd probably be running too long. It's probably about yeah. seven feet. You've got a lot. I got like a foot and a half, two <laughs> feet max. And then from your hopper, you go down to your dropper, which we're using a little uh, size of 16 Prince Nymph. Yeah, which is the important, uh, the important length. You got about a foot and a half to two feet. And, and we use fluorocarbon too. Fluorocarbon tippet. And we're, of course, we're fishing a foot to two feet of, of riffle water. Well, this is where this will work. It won't work in water that's any deeper than that. Exactly. And that nymph has to bounce along the bottom, and that's what you're trying to fish. So you got the perfect run in front of you here. So what you're going to do is what, cast up? Cast up, and let it drift right through the pocket. No drag. Again, just like nymph fishing. Cast it up, and just let her swing down. And get that dead free drift. Get the dead free float. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The big key is getting that nymph on the bottom. Okay, well, it is heating up. Maybe we'll even get one on the hopper. <laughs> Maybe. It's pretty windy, though. <laughs> yeah. It's a little chuck and duck today. <laughs> Which hole do you want to try first? Don't matter. Well, this one looks really good. Try this okay. one here. I don't want to get over there too far either, do I? It's not very deep. It gets deeper after there and in here. You had one right away? Yeah. It's a nice fish. Oh yeah, right on. Yeah, that was with the, <laughs> the dropper hopper. Well, you said we were gonna make the switch, right? Well, we did. You know, we, you stuck with the, uh, you stuck with the gooey bob for a while, yep. just to try it out, because we, you know, we didn't have much luck, because the holes were all, fairly shallow, we noticed. Everything was really shallowed up here. It's a little lower than when we came last year, right? And we thought, geez, you know, uh, dropper hopper would be great because it wasn't warming up. And, oh. oh, and he got off. And he got off, and they're babbling away. But hey, that was a nice fish. It was a nice fish. And that was with the hopper dropper. But you said it, you wanted to fish here because you saw them rising here. We walked yeah. up here last night, you saw them rising here. And I think there's more because that whole run there, they were popping in the in the shallow yep. and they were popping out a bit. So. What nymph do you have on? Is your dropper right now? Right now? I, I have a little pheasant tail nymph. It's okay. similar to a uh, the one we were using earlier. And you've tried the pheasant tail with the strike indicator and the, the traditional way of yeah, nymphing. Yeah, and, and, and you no know luck. we didn't have any luck. We didn't have any luck at all. It was I think it was getting down. We had about seven feet of tippet, and I think it was too long. You know, it was bouncing on the bottom, but they might it's want it just up a little bit. Yeah, yeah it just must have looked the natural. So I've got probably a foot and a half to two feet from the hopper down off the tippet to my nymph. Yep. And that hopper sits it up real nice. It's a great little way of fishing. Perfect. It's, it's probably one of the best ways of nymphing in shallower water. Because that can't be any more than two feet out there. Yep. But the fish are holding there. <laughs> and that's the key. Well, you caught one there, you know they're there. So I'll move out of your road. Oh, hi. <laughs> 
You knew they were going to be sitting in there. You know, they they had to be, didn't it. they? Yeah, it's such oh, a pretty yeah. little run. Here he was sitting right behind that tree there. Perfect hiding Perfect place hiding for hiding place. And that's a nice bow. And see, what, what is that? Maybe a foot of water? No, yeah, even a yeah. foot of water. So what a great way to do this is hopper dropper. Is it yeah. ever? Because really on the shallow, when you're fishing shallow water in riffles, in yeah. the faster water, you got the dry and the wet. It's a perfect combination. And a lot of guys, where the regulations permit it, they put two droppers on. So they'll put two nymphs in a row right. with the hopper. And we'll show you that setup in a minute. And it's, it is, it's a great <laughs> effective way to fish. And if you never try it, try it for sure. Because, uh, well, it's a blast, eh? Well, especially a day like today because, you know, we could get them on the hopper too because it's starting to heat up a yeah. lot. And it is very windy. So it makes it real easy. That is a nice fish. It is a nice one, yeah. And you knew it, eh? They're just, you call it. You said they're going to be sitting along this ledge for sure because it's nice and shallow. It's out of the main run. Oh, that's a nice size rainbow. <laughs> hey, it's good. They're good fighting. Really good fighting. Oh, okay, here he is. Oh, it's a beauty. Yeah. So now we've done the hopper dropper thing. Oh, whoa, oh, that's a nice fat bowl. Fish. Oh, fat fish. Nice fish. <laughs> Oh, oh look at that. that fish. Just on the lip. Just barely, eh? Oh. Look at that. Marvelous hooks. Oh, what a beauty. You know, these crow's nest river rainbow are beautiful. They fish. are gorgeous, yeah. What, they... a, what a great place to, to show folks how to have nymph fish and everything else up here. Oh. Hi, and welcome to the bench. You know, if you're going to go up fishing and use that hopper dropper type method, a great fly to have as a dropper is the beadhead pheasant tail nymph. Why is mainly because that beadhead gets the fly right to the bottom where you want the nymph to be and it hooks me up a lot of fish, so it can't be too bad. Here's a list of ingredients you should have before you start tying this fly. We're going to use some 6 odd brown thread for the thread. I'm going to tie this on a TMC 2487 size 14 scud pupa hook. For the bead, we're going to use a 1 8 gold bead. We're going to use six strands of pheasant tail for the tail. We're also going to use pheasant tail for the body, some fine gold rib for the ribbing. For the thorax, we're going to use some peacock curl. And for the wing, we're going to use a small strand of mallard. I've already tied on my thread and my bead head. I've already put it on the hook and I've tied my thread to the back of the hook. Now I've taken my six strands of my pheasant tail and I'm going to create a tail that's probably about a quarter of an inch long just by these pheasant tail tips. I have a small strand of gold ribbing. I'm now going to take this gold ribbing, put it onto my fly and tie it in in the back of the hook. I have eight strands of pheasant tail. I'm now going to take it in and tie it in by the tips, tie it onto my body, wrap it back towards the tail just to tie it down and wrap my thread forward back up close to the bead and leave that. We're now going to take that pheasant tail and wrap it forward to form the body. As you're wrapping the body up forward, make sure that you keep the body fairly thin. We don't want a nice thick body, we want a fairly thin body all the way up towards the bead head. Let's take the gold rib we put in earlier and wrap it forward. And as we wrap, I like to make four to five segments four to five turns up the body. For the thorax, we're going to take one strand of our peacock curl and tie it in right at the top, right behind the bead. And we're going to take about five to six wraps of the peacock curl just to form a nice, fairly thick thorax. For the wing, I've taken about 10 fine strands from our mallard tip. And when we tie this in, keep it very short. It's just attacked as a very, very small wing on the top. So we're just going to tie it in. I've probably got about an eighth of an inch on the top of my hook. And we'll just wrap it in and cut off the excess material on the top. Beadhead pheasant tail nymph. Great little fly and really easy to tie. That's a nice one. Good fish. Yeah, we finally went with the uh, with the dropper hopper. Oh, that's another neat way of doing it. It is for sure. This is a nice sized fish. This one here. 
Whoa. And did it take the hopper or the dropper? I think it took the dropper. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's that type of day, and that's that's why we're doing the show. Let everybody see how the fish flies wet. Because there are days when you can't take them dry. No, and, and this is a nice combination, you know. It's a real nice way that if you have dry fly once in a while, yep. and, and you want to catch the bigger fish, you put on the dropper hopper. It's perfect. You, what you do is you have the grasshopper up higher, you know, about a foot off your normal line, then you put a dropper down about a foot and a half to two feet of, of wet line, you know, some fluorocarbon, and stick a nice little nymph on there. I got a little Prince nymph on here. And, uh, and you have good luck. This is a nice sized fish. That's I think I'm gonna have to fish. move in with him. I'll let you move in and I'm gonna move up here where it's a little shallower. It's a little All too right. deep back there. You gotta be in about a foot and a half of water yeah, for this to work. In the, right in the head end of the pool. Nice That's fish. What it's holding. It is a real nice fish. Just barely in the lip. Whoa. Whoa. Come on in here. Come on in there, big guy. Oh, that's a nice, nice crow's nest river rainbow. Just barely got him in the lip. There he is, nice, nice, real nice rainbow. Nice size, and that's on the dropper hopper technique, which we showed you. So we'll get him back in. There he goes. Gee, you make it in here without getting blown away. <laughs> How'd you make out there? Oh, last pool, nothing there. It was a, that was a tough day. Tough day of fishing. It was. I mean, as you can see, the wind is just howling today, all day. It's made it really tough. You know, we came to the Crow's Nest River hoping to get some, some dry fly. Yeah. It just didn't happen because the conditions weren't right, but it just no. shows you nymphing is a very successful way to enjoy a day of fishing. It is, and you can do it really effectively. You know, you can catch fish on otherwise the day that you think you're going to go home empty. Yeah, you can catch the biggest fish, too, in the pool because you're nymphing. It's yeah, 90 percent of the fish feed on nymphs. So there you go. You know, that could be a really good way to fish. Yeah, and be persistent too. You know, don't Always. give up. Yeah, don't give up and start at the backs of the pool, the very bottom end of the pool, and work your way to the head. You know, a lot of guys go right to the head end. Sure, they might catch some fish, but they spook the rest they of spook them. The rest of them yeah. Well, that's where you say the biggest fish is, is at the head of the pool. Yeah, but everybody gets too anxious. They want to get in there real quick. <laughs> oh, but it was still a successful day of fishing, and when you're out in the wild, yeah. make sure you take care. And conserve our waters, get a great fishery like this one here. Yeah. See you next time. On Sport Fishing on the Fly. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Bear, makers of high quality waders and outerwear. And by Able, makers of quality reels and accessories.